I am extremely thankful for this church family. I'm extremely thankful for my Salem church family, which are both represented here today. But uh, I'm really thankful for this little girl right here. Um, she, has had, she has had quite an eventful story. There's a lot that's going on in her life. And uh, she's come through a lot of really difficult roads. And she just keeps growing in her faith. She just keeps getting stronger. And it's just, it always just makes me so proud, you know, to, to everything that she's, she has negotiated and what she's done. Can I show the cover? Or is that, yes. Am I stealing your thunder? No. Okay. Okay. This book uh, just got released. When we speak, it's available on Amazon.com. And uh, where do you buy it? Amazon. Amazon. Amazon.com. I got it. And uh, we are we are blessed because Sarah has actually written a chapter in this book. And, uh, and on her birthday Thursday, when we didn't get to celebrate on her birthday here at Bible study, because she was up in Bloomington for a gathering to launch the book. So what I've done today is, uh, because I'm so thankful for this kid, I want her to share a little bit with us for a few minutes to kick this off, if that's okay with you. So, yeah. Sarah, it's all yeah.
Meanwhile, at school, I already mentioned that the teachers were judging me differently, but were so were all of my classmates. There wasn't a day at school that went by that I didn't have some sort of bullying. Whether it was something as simple as they smashed my food, to one time there was a sewer pit outside of our school. They took and threw my shoes into the sewer pits. The janitor had to go retrieve them to, so that they could say, now you've got those. There's a reason that you smell and look the way that you do. And teachers stood by and laughed. I ended up, I went on to college. I had a Bible college of all places for a year. I tried crying out for help. Nobody cared. You see, they knew my family was heavily involved in Bible college graduates. They would call me a liar. They would tell me I was just attention seeking. <clears throat> Nobody cared. I was told to stop lying. I ended up, I actually got kicked out of college for trying to seek help. After that, I went back home because I had nowhere else to go. The abuse continued to the point where one day I was in my brother's room having a conversation with him about his favorite thing, the Cardinals. It's in the middle of baseball season, getting ready for World Series playoffs. For some reason, my father went into one of his spells. The next thing I know, I'm being jerked out of my brother's room by a rope around my my arms and my feet. I ended up, I had carpet burn on my back, on the backs of my legs. He also grabbed me by my hair, jerked me around, and I ended up with a two inch bald spot on top of my head. That night we were having some sort of event at church. I thought, great, finally, with all of this evidence on me, I could go and seek help and somebody would, would rescue me. No. They once again, the leaders looked at me and said, what did you do to make him mad? What did you do to deserve this? It's all your fault. From that time on, I decided that if that was the God that was God in the churches, I didn't want anything to do with it. I turned my back on God for over 15 years. I didn't want anything to do. You would mention the word God and I would argue back. I wouldn't go as far as to say I was an atheist because I knew there was something, but I knew that he wasn't for me. 2016, I'm getting ready for my first pretty princess party with Henry. Most of you now know that as our commitment ceremony. My family still sees it as our wedding. I was beginning to have flashbacks, not wanting to prepare for this wedding, but yet knowing. I was suicidal. I'd hit rock bottom. I was back into my cutting and burning, because I was a self-harmer as well. I still have the scars on me to prove it. And randomly, God knew who I needed. God knew that I needed him. A friend that had not been in my life for many, many years reached out one day and said, hey, come give this church a try. I laughed, threw her in her face and said, no, you know that there is no God. And God's not for me. Slowly but surely, it took a few months and a lot of arguing back and forth. I found my way through that door right there. I came into this church building hurt, broken, abandoned, at rock bottom, quiet, not wanting to say anything to anybody for fear that I would once again be judged and rejected. But God knew all along what I needed. God knew that he was still right there waiting. He is the God who saves. And just like the song said, when the world had walked away from him, and I had walked away from him, he was still right there waiting with his open arms, just waiting for me to come back home. 
even then, I still wasn't sure what the depth of was with God. But I knew I was missing something. So as life continued to go on, and other events kept happening, we kept growing deeper and deeper in our faith here. God knew and still continued to align people in my path that I needed. Whenever it came time for COVID and all the churches shut down, Russ jumped to, to service with the church at Effingham, the journey, and decided, no, no, they're saying we can't come to church. Fine, we're going to have church in the parking lot. I continued to go. God knew then that that was what I was going to need. He knew that I needed not only this church family, but that church family as well. Because as most of you know, in, then in September of 2020, when my brother died from COVID at 34 years old, I started sliding backwards again. I was going back to rock bottom. I was back to my drinking. I was back to popping pain pills. I was back to self-harming and burning. But yet I was trying to live in denial. It wasn't that big of a deal. God still loved me. Yes, God did love me. But I hadn't fallen in love with him yet. But then scripture verses came coming at me. Verses like Matthew 6, 24. You cannot be a slave of two masters. You will hate one and love the other. You will be loyal to one and despise the other. Sadly, at that point, I was falling more in love with the world all the time. But God still continued to love me. I began to hear things like it, it didn't matter in my head what I heard because what I needed to focus on was the things that God said. I had voices of reason continually all around me. One day, out of the blue, because of God, I had two scripture verses appear on my Facebook feed. I'm worn out with pain. Every night my pillow is wet with tears. My eyes are growing old and dim with grief because of all of my enemies. Psalm 6, 6 and 7. And the other one was problems far too big for me to solve or piled higher than my head. <laughs> Meanwhile, my sins, too many to count, have all come up with me. I'm ashamed to look up. That was Psalm 40, 12. Those verses were describing my feelings so much. I've continued to grow so much since that point. I've become involved with many advocacy, helping victims of abuse. I'm very active and a leader in the Celebrate Recovery Program at Journey. I'm now a sponsor of two girls that are dealing with, with high anxiety. Never touched a pill, never touched alcohol. But they're, they battle depression on a daily basis. And God has used my scars for his glory now. Romans 8, 8, 38 and 39. For I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can't. Life can't. The angels won't. The powers of hell itself cannot keep God's love away. Nothing, no matter what you are facing or have done, no shame, no hurt. Nothing will separate you from his love. Now I understand the true depth of what it means to be a true Christian. God's continually working in my life each and every day. Now I'm a brand new person inside. I don't see myself the same way. He, but he never, he never changed the way that he looked at me. I'm now a new creation. A new life has begun. Ephesians tells us all in Ephesians 4.23 that our attitudes and thoughts must be constantly changing. I've reached that point. Am I perfect? No way. None of us are. And we won't be on this side of heaven. 
But as long as you are striving each and every day to be better than you were before, that's what he wants. If you continue to allow him to change no matter your scars, no matter your hurts, no matter your faults, he will change you forever and make you white as wool. No matter how much or how often you have messed up, talk about it with God. Take it to him. That's Isaiah 1, 18 and 19 kind of summarized. Now, I understand the true power of resisting the devil. There are days that I can feel the battle's coming. I can tell Satan to flee. How cool is that, guys? <laughs> the power that's there is like no other. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. When you draw close to God, God continues to draw closer to you. James 4, 6 through 8. Now the verses that seem to stick most in my life now are, I am sure that God who began a good work in you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his task with you is finished on that day when Christ returns. That's Philippians 1, 6. You're now living a brand new kind of life that is continually learning more and more of what is right. Trying to be constantly more like the Christ who created this new life in you. Colossians 3.10 And Genesis 50.20. God will use the very thing that was meant to destroy you to deliver you. Woo! It took a lot of nerve for me to be able to write my chapter. Um, it is associated with a not-for-profit organization that two ladies have organized together. One is in Nashville, Tennessee. One is in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. One of them is actually a child trafficker, has been child trafficked from the age of nine and groomed. Um, and it's a person that I knew when she was very little. And that's another one of those awesome God moments that God knew that I had a story. God knew that I needed healing. And he united us together two years ago. At first, whenever she asked me to write my chapter, I was a bit hesitant. Not because I didn't, I didn't think I had a story, but because I was scared to tell it. I had been silenced for far too long. Everyone told me that, you know, you're a liar. That's all I had ever heard. I never heard the positive things. But then you say continually would play over in my head over and over and over again. And I knew then that God was holding me. God was behind all of this. So, yes, it was with great honor and great pride that I did go ahead and commit to writing the chapter. At the book release, it was the most amazing feeling to have total, complete strangers who knew nothing about my story, didn't know my name, didn't know anything. But I was working at the merchandise tables helping sell the books and talk about it, promote it, things. To have them look and just bring praise and honor to all of the, there's ten chapters in the book. So there are ten individual ladies that have written part of their stories. The hardest thing for me was figuring out which small part to write about. Because I kind of like words <laughs> when I go to write. But I narrowed it down to, to how that abusive night in 2001, how it, how it impacted my life and how I had turned my back. But through it all, God is still there. Amen. God will be there for you no matter what. Amen. And then I leave you with, when you speak your story, your chains will break. Don't let the devil intimidate you into keeping quiet. That's what he wants. He wants silence. He doesn't want warriors, but we all have something that our lives have been impacted by, and God wants us to tell our stories for his glory. Amen. That's our girl, guys. That's our girl. I love how she 
ended that. We all have a story. But it, it's all different stories. But when we find the path that she finds, God gets the glory. I have a friend uh, whose sister is struggling with something right now. Something similar. And I'm um, going to tap her into her stuff that's going on. And, and because uh, the system does fail us. But God never does. That's why. And, and so when, when, uh, when Sarah agreed to do this for me today and for us, she was like, um, yeah, but I want, to, I want us to play the God who stays and you say. And now I know why. <laughs> so uh, for, for me, um, the journey to watch people grow is why this is all worth it. When you see somebody go from here to there, I was... Uh, I was very fortunate in, uh, in that um, I got to hear a brother of mine actually from our church in Salem who I was having dinner with and, and I could see that thing, changes were going on in his life. I could see things were different. And uh, this, was, this has been uh, like a couple of years ago. We had just started the church and I, I hadn't even known him that long. And... He wasn't even talking to me. He was talking to one of my mentors who happened to have been sitting there with us, Pastor Keller. And, and he said, he pointed at me and said, he did a sermon that changed my life. Wow. I know, that's what I said. It's like, there's no way that you can't be humbled by that. Because you know it's not you. Just like Sarah, and I love how Sarah was always giving glory to God. It's like it's not because it's not me doing it. We've tried it our own ways before, right guys? We've tried it. We've tried to figure it out. But the God who changes, it stays changed. Yes. And, and, we have, and that's why being connected to a, a, a family of believers is so important because... I, I, and I love again that she said, it's so true, we, we make the changes and then the enemy tries to make us change it right back. He, makes, he, he, comes, he comes up and he starts tempting again. And, and we have to have the, the, the community, we have to have the spiritual maturity to see that coming and be able to resist that. Because like she said in the book of James, I use, the reason I knew that was in James is because I use it all the time too. Resist the devil and he will flee. You know why? He has no power over the power of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus Christ is where all the power is at. And when we tap into that source, lives change forever. Every one of us in this room, I feel, has a story that says that. That, look, this changed in my life and I couldn't have done it without Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I'm very fortunate that I've been doing this for... Wow, getting close to 20 years now, and, and a lot of you guys have witnessed my changes, and, and I've got to witness some of yours, and man, there's nothing greater than watching lives change because of the blood of Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary, because he's the one with that changing power, and that's why her, her testimony is so powerful, because there's actually life changing, and uh, while... Um, the, the, the person who pestered her to start coming to church happened to be my sister. <laughs> but, and, and, and I know that we've all had some influence on that. But it was God who made the day. He's the one who changed. And you know what? In those lonely nights, when, when, when you feel that draw going back to pulling out some old bad habits, it's not one of us that's going to be the power to resist the devil, it's going to be the power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And when we know to tap into that, he has to flee. He has to, Satan has to obey. That's the most beautiful part about being a Christian. He doesn't have a choice. When we invoke, invoke the power of Jesus Christ, he has to flee. Now we've got to have the faith to know that he will kick him out. And there's the key in it says, you've got to have the faith to know that when you resist him, he's got to go. And you walk in that victory. You stay in that victory. You claim that victory just like Sis does. Just like Sarah does. She claims it. She walks in it every single day. She inspires me. And uh, I'm just thankful you're part of this family. My, my little sis. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I just thank you guys for being a part of that with me. This was important to me. I felt like God was telling me we need to do this tonight because we are in a season where we're supposed to be focusing on what we're thankful for. And I'm telling you what, uh, I'm thankful for the changing power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because that's the only place it goes and stays. Yes. So I want to pray tonight, especially uh, for my friend, because she's on the journey. She's going to start on that road. I'm praying very soon. But I want you guys to pray with me and be in, in agreement for that. Because, uh, and, and without going into a lot of detail, her name is Leanne. Okay? So we're going to pray for Leanne. And, I, and, and because I know the power of a body of believers is strong, right? Because, yes. because the scripture says where one can put, how many to flight? Ten. Ten, two can put 10,000. Yeah. yeah. So when we're all a body of believers believing for something... And if you have something you need us to do that for, you let us know because we're going we're gonna to wrap our arms around you and love on you and, and we're going to watch God do another amazing thing. It's a miracle. It's nothing short of a miracle. Mike has, the same, Mike has a similar story. My sister has a similar story. I've got a similar story. It's the miracle what God does in our lives to change us and heal us and let us stand on that rock that, we'll, that we can stand on forever. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come before your throne tonight to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing story that we got to hear tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the changing power that is you. Lord, we want to bring another one of your children to your feet tonight, Lord. I pray with everyone here in the precious name of Jesus that you are able to reach out and touch Leanne in a way that she's never felt your presence before, Lord. We know she believes in you. We know she wants this help. But God, I know you are the author. You are the great physician, Lord. And I know you can do all things. And we have faith to believe in that. We will stand on that, on that Lord, and that healing. So, Lord, we're praying over her tonight. That the right steps are taken to get her into the right places. Lord, so that we can be there for her, so that others who have been down that road can be there for her. Lord, we just thank you in advance for being that God who always stays. We thank you, Lord, for in our weakest moments, you can just say, you are mine, because Lord, we are yours, and we love you for that. We praise your holy name. Amen.